What is going on, everybody? I'm James Young with jamesyoungphotography.com, and this is Teach Me How to Lightroom. Now, today we're talking about Instagram and its relationship to Lightroom, and really how you can leverage Lightroom before you get to Instagram so your post can already be ready to rock as soon as you get to IG. Now, before we go any further, I really want to just talk about Smug Mug for just a second. Smug Mug is the photo storage solution that I use for my clients to A, store my photos, and for B, to sell prints. Now, the great thing about Smug Mug is that regardless if you are a working professional or even if you're a hobbyist, they have packages for you. And the best part of all is that any one of the packages comes right out of the gate with unlimited storage. So I don't know if you're anything like me and you shoot a lot of client work or perhaps you go on vacation a lot or whatever the case is, you're gonna rack up a lot of photos. And the great part is, is that every one of the tiers comes with unlimited photo storage. So that means they don't put a paywall behind a package that you might want a little bit more based on the volume of pictures that you're using. So just check the link in the description down below and you'll be able to save 15% on any one of the packages and you can start storing all of your photos right away. Now check it out. The first tip has to do with your composition. Now I picked this photo in particular because it's shot in the vertical or portrait orientation. And I get this question all the time. How come when I export and I get ready to post my vertical photo, how come I always have to crop this thing and why won't Instagram just let me live? And here's why. The aspect ratio of most digital cameras right now shoots at about two by three on your aspect ratio. Now the vertical aspect ratio on Instagram is a little bit different on the maximum end. So here, check this out. I went to my crop overlay. You can press R on your keyboard if you're feeling perky. Under tool, you see aspect. Here's the original. That's gonna be your two by three. But if you click down here on this drop down, you're gonna have a bunch of different options. Now, for vertical, you're going to want to choose 4 by 5 slash 8 by 10. This is the aspect ratio for the vertical orientation that Instagram is going to max out at. So then I just recompose my shot real quick, press enter, and now this vertical composition is ready for Instagram. You won't need to crop it once you get into the app. And that is just super crucial because sometimes folks don't leave enough headroom. Sometimes folks have something that they're not anticipating to have to crop out from Instagram and they end up needing to crop or they end up doing like the square app thing. And that's kind of provides just an odd feel for your feed. Now, of course, you can also do this if you wanted to make your aspect ratio that one to one or that traditional square look for Instagram. And of course, have it ready for IG before you get to the app, which I think is a huge, huge advantage for a photographer when you're strategizing your post in advance. But I'm just going to go ahead and move this back to the four by five because I want to post this as a vertical shot with lots of headroom and bam, that's about right. I love it. Now, the next tip is about getting it ready for exporting and your export settings. So for exporting, as you probably already know, you just click file export. Again, if you're feeling perky, you can press command shift E on your keyboard, and this is going to give you a bunch of options. Now, I want to talk specifically again about Instagram. Now, image sizing plays kind of a big role when you're dealing with social media and especially Instagram in particular. So you're gonna wanna resize your long edge or your short edge, depending on how you feel about it, to kinda get yourself close to what Instagram is willing to work with. So if you're using a modern DSLR and it has like 37,000 megapixels and you're dealing with 400 megabyte raw files and you export them as a JPEG and it's like 14 megabytes or whatever, you're, it's, it's overkill for Instagram. It honestly is. And you can totally, totally, totally bring that down. You can see here, I shot this image with a 5D Mark IV 85 millimeter F1.2 
and I'm going to severely chop down this image size because there's no reason for me to rock with like a 40 megabyte JPEG file because Instagram is going to cut down the quality regardless. So here's the image sizing that I use that I find gets me the best results. I click resize the image. There's a drop down here for the long edge. In this scenario, the long edge is the vertical edge. In your landscape photos, the long edge would be your horizontal edge. And I changed this for 1920 just across the board. Now, when I talked about it doesn't matter what size you do, if it's too large, Instagram is gonna stunt your growth. This is facts because check this out. On the Instagram website, it says right here, if you share a photo at a high resolution, we size it down to a width of 1080 pixels. So check this out. Maximum width, 1080. We go here, long edge, 1920. Now, if the long edge was the width of the photo, Instagram would be cutting that down about 800 some odd pixels. Now, I'm willing to sacrifice 800 pixels and sacrifice like one kilobyte of information, but I would really just be bloating my Dropbox if I was exporting these at the full resolution and like having gigs and gigs and gigs of data when Instagram is only showing like the tiniest sliver of that potential quality. Then for my resolution, I leave this at 300. This just is going to pack in as much information within those pixels that we have available as possible. Now, outputting for sharpening is going to be personal preference. I do crank up the sharpening a little bit within the various editing modules and the develop module in Lightroom, so I don't do any more with the exporting. Then, of course, I add a watermark to the images that I post on Instagram and to my social media. That is also personal preference. And from here, I'm just going to go ahead and cancel this whole transaction. Well, there you have it. Those are my two main Instagram tips with Lightroom. If you like this video, please leave it a thumbs up. If you learned something, share it with another photographer that can benefit from this information. And if this is your first video, it would be awesome if you stuck around and subscribed. Well, I'm James Young with jamesyoungphotography.com, and this is Teach Me How to Lightroom. <music>